So after that, we can do a little bit of upcoming fights that were reported or confirmed. Um, I mean, there's there's several, a couple dozen of them. I'll just hit the ones that I think everybody will like. I rate them all up. Um, but we go through these every week, and we seem to have fun doing it. Uh, so, man, I wish Wes was here because uh, Waldo Acosta is fighting Junior Taffa on, Jan- on February 11th. I don't know why they like Waldo, Waldo Costa, but you better take his ass. The UFC likes him. I don't know why. Don't bet against that, man. I've been telling you guys. It's been cashing. I do not know why they give this man fights he seems to be able to win. I haven't taped that fight yet. But Who's he fighting again? Junior Taffa. He was supposed to fight Lane. Lane is out, so he's fighting Junior Taffa. So... I don't Could know. be a striking battle. I don't think Costa is like super elite or anything. Uh, but man, he just keeps winning, bro. Like, I, he does keep winning. So I'll look at it. I will tape it. You guys know that. But man, bro, just, look at who he's fighting. Come on, man. This guy's not going to go anywhere. He, he'll, keep, he'll keep smashing these unranked dudes. But if, when, if he ever touches a ranked guy, man, yikes. <laughs> Yeah, I agree with you, Andrew. I feel like this can be another story of what's his face? The the guy who beat up his wife? Damn it. Who went to Bernaco? Or boxing, whatever. Dana (laughs) what? No, No, he's talking about uh, uh, Greg Hardy. Yeah, we're like, like he might have started winning or like had kind of like a good record in the beginning. But like, come on, like we all could see that he didn't have the skill to be up there. And then, yeah, he got beat the shit up like the last three or four fights. I just said I don't see him as a great talent. He's getting favorable matchups because they like him. Um, but um, if they walk him slow, there is there is a legitimate way that guys, when they're not rushed through the UFC, get several levels better. I'm not calling him to be a champ. I'm not like don't don't put me on the on the cross here defending this guy. Um, but, like, if he were to walk up four or five favorable fights, slightly getting harder and harder, stiffer in competition, like, you could see a great improvement in his game. Like, the guy's got good striking. I'm not saying we're ever going to see him up in the top five, top seven, but I think he's got a future in the UFC, and they like him. That's what's – that's – I'm not a narrative guy, but, like, there's certain dynamics, and when the company likes you, you know, keep making weight and keep doing whatever you do to make them like you. Um, yeah, I don't know. I agree with you, though, Andrew. You put him up there with them big boys, they're probably going to fucking sleep him, um, no matter how much I like him. Courtney Casey is out. Gabriel Fernandez will fight Yasmin. Jet, say her last name, Andrew. I think it's Jazz Devicious. Yeah. Um, Courtney Casey's out, bro? Yeah, she's out. Oh, man. Dude. Dude, that was Split City right there. (laughs) (laughs) Scratch that shit. Uh, (laughs) March 4th, Valentina Shevchenko versus Alexa Grasso apparently is set to go. Um, Let's go. Yeah. I I favor Valentina, but, like, I think Alexa's really good, and I I think Valentina is slowing down. I'm sorry. I think she is. So, like... Man, maybe, maybe if it goes to the decision, we could see something weird. Um, see you and new. Go ahead, Marin. I mean, who's riding and catching these big underdogs with me with Grasso? Now, I'm just, I'm just messing with you guys, but for us, I mean, I'm gonna be cheering with Grasso always. Uh, I do think that I wonder why. <laughs> Honestly, like to Joe's point, like I have, like I've seen her like last few like matchups and like. She's been looking good, dominant, except the only one where she lost, which was the Lamos one. I feel like in that one, Lamos just rushed out, like, beat her up, and that was it, because the fight only lasted, like, 20 seconds. But other than that, like, she's looked composed, and, like, she's won the mostly decisions, but she's won, and, like, I mean, if she sticks to the game plan, it should work, but let's see what, what happens from here to the fight. Yeah, in her last fight, I literally was thinking, saying to the people I watched the fight with, like, She's one or two fights away from being ready. But 
Valentina has she has been very good at fighting pe- people before they are ready through her career. She has been very good at that. You can go back. You can look at where people were when they fought her, where they where they went after. She's been very, very good about getting them out of the way, and she doesn't rematch for a reason because you they go like get anti Floyd Mayweather. Yeah, the, she's very smart. I, I give it to her. Uh, Usman, go ahead. Tyler Santos did all that work exposing that Valentina Shevchenko has slowed down a bit and uh, she can have some deficiencies on the ground just so that Alexa Grasso can pull out some wackadoodle win and submit Valentina Shevchenko. I don't think we need a decision. I think Valentina is going to realize real quick, oh shit, Grasso got a little bit on the feet here. Let me just take her down. It's going to be easy. I'm way stronger. Let me take her down. And she's going to get submitted by Grasso. And uh, I think uh, Grasso is coming into her age right now. Like, she's been around for a while already. And I think she was back at 115. She had her ups and downs, comes up to 125. And she's filling out. I think she's only getting better. And unlike every other fighter that comes out of Mexico, besides Brandon Moreno, they've fallen on their face before they even get to this top 10 area. I think Alexa Grasso is breakthrough. Yeah, anybody know the odds on that? Like anybody, I, I got them up. I'll have them for you in just a second here. If if that fight is posted, it should be on uh, best fight odds. Uh, Andrew, go ahead. Bro, I think Usman and Marin are related, bro. Like they sound the exact same, I swear. <laughs> um, uh, no, nah, styles make fights. And I think uh, Tyler Santos actually, I, I mean, I think she won the fight. She did show a little bit of weakness, but that's not Alexa Grasso. Um, yeah, no. This is terrible for her. This is going to be another – I wouldn't say quick, but she's going to dominate this fight. This is going to be a typical Valentina fight. She's going to take her down. She's going to get her out of there. Minus 610 Valentina on DraftKings, plus 460 for Grasso. Betway's got Valentina at minus four, 549 and uh, – Grasso at plus 400. Those are the best odds and the worst odds. There's a couple in between. Um, Dude, even uh, on the feet. Even on the feet. Like, I think Valentina keeps keeps space. She, she sticks that jab out. She's good with the leg kicks. I think she beats her on the feet, too, bro. Unless she trains different. Unless she trains differently and, some, and shows, I don't know, that it, wasn't, that it was a fluke in the last camp, I think Grasso will be faster on the feet. I feel like, man, unless it was just the way she trained to fight uh, Santos, like I felt like Val looked significantly slower last fight. Like I felt like it was very notable. Um, maybe. You think maybe she looked slower get seven on the feet? defenses in. What's that, Andrew? You, you think she looked slower on the feet? Yeah. I thought She's her standing hands. Up? Looked... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I did. I, 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 I don't know if it was because maybe she wasn't training striking as much. Maybe she was preparing. You know, she's very good at prepping for her opponents. Maybe she was parent, preparing for grapple heavy, clinch heavy. Maybe she was, compa- you know, preparing different. So it's it's like a fluke in what I've seen. But, man, it looked like she is genuinely slowed down to me. Liam, go ahead. Man, I, I honestly – Felt so robbed on that fight. I had Talia Santos, two units at plus 450. And boys, I thought we had done enough. But the other thing was, I thought that the uh, the damage to Talia Santos' face from the clash of heads was like the ultimate decider. You know, like there's been a number of women's fights where if there's a clash of heads, if there's like significant bleeding, it doesn't matter who's winning the striking exchanges. Because like you mentioned, they don't often win by knockout. So it comes down to who looks worse and who's looking worse after each exchange. And if I already have a giant cut on my head, I'm going to look worse, even though I thought she was doing great work throughout the fight. And I thought that what's interesting is she has a background as a Muay Thai striker. That's like most of her background, but she's just very physically strong and she has a blue belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, but she trains with good people and she knows real skills and she's made it work for her in MMA and she's super physical, which a lot of women are not. And so I had said to myself, 
before the fight, the reason I thought she was going to win was because she was really physical. And Val's used to just bullying people around like they're no big deal. So for me, the question is just how physical will Alexa Grasso be on fight night? And if she, you know, comes in looking the most jacked she's ever looked and ready to stand up to Val physically, you know, I might have one opinion of the fight, but if Val looks like she's going to be significantly stronger, that is normally how she wins these fights. I mean, Jennifer Maya, because she had some physical strength, took a round off this woman by just flat backing her in the clinch because she's technical, sure, but she's 35 and she's obviously on road to a decline. Like it's just inevitable. And she's not even focused on all these fights. So then if somebody like Jennifer Maya can take you down and just hold you flat for a round, anybody who could really grapple could give you problems. And so Alexa Grasso has been focused on her jujitsu pretty intently for the last two years. I'd be interested to see how that translates because I do think Valentina's grappling is somewhat overrated. Yeah, I think that we've been shown that. I don't want to necessarily say overrated. I just feel like um, people are catching up to it. Like, I don't, you know, like, I feel like it is what people thought it was, but it's like any standard you set. Like, they're training to catch that. Everybody's staring at Valentina. Like, you're training for the opponent in front of you, but you're training for the champion. So I feel like the skill sets needed to to uh, dock or to bay her grappling, they're just, those skill sets, these fighters have that now. Like, she's got to evolve, and I don't see it. I see her aging, whether people realize it or not. She's aging fight-wise, no matter what. She's aging round-wise. Um, and I'm a huge Val fan. I always have been, but, like, man, I'm worried we're going to see her lose it and not get it back. She should retire in soon, in my opinion. Marin, go ahead. I oh, just wanted to say goodbye to you, to you fellas, and have a good night. I gotta start getting my things ready for tomorrow because I'll be playing some soccer games after work. So gotta find my old stuff. But anyways, this was fun, guys. See you all next week, and good luck. And on the way, there's no fights on Saturdays. But anyways, stay safe. Later on, Bob. We'll see you next week, bro. Um, with Marin leaving, I'll just use that as a way to skip on to the next fight. Uh, same card, Mana Martinez versus, uh, Cameron Seaman. And then Dan Hooker versus Jalen Turner was just at. Uh, yeah, as the resident, as the resident and Zach of these spaces, can Jalen Turner leave us the hell alone, please? <laughs> He said, I'm taking city kickboxing out one at a time, baby. <laughs> I'm for the whole club, bro. <laughs> I don't, yeah, that's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, Marab versus Peter Yan is official for UFC Vegas 71 on March 11th. Uh, Jonathan Martinez, Saeed Nurmagomedov, uh... Same card, uh, Volk or Alexander Volk Volkov and Alexander Romanov also added to that card. Um, that'll shape up pretty nice. I mean, bro, Volkov is gonna lay that man out. Yeah, that's that one's the free money. Um, man, Peter Jan's gonna take another L. That fucking sucks, bro. I like him. I, I swear to God, I called him to be a champion in like his first or second UFC fight. Oh, wouldn't stop saying it every time he fought, bro. I knew, but like, he's about to take another fucking L. Ain't that a bitch? He ain't beating the Rob. Tell me I'm wrong. I'll be okay with it, but like, he's not beating the Rob, bro. Come on. I think that's what he gets for saying he wants to fucking leave. They're going to cash your ass out and then release you, bro. Dana White don't fuck around. He don't fuck around. You so you think he'll be able to successfully? Oh wait, no. You think Jan's gonna lose, right? Fuck yeah! Hell no. Okay, okay. Never mind. Never mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, because you do too. He's gonna fucking lose, bro. It's fine. Um, he's gonna end up in Bellator. I believe that. I believe that. I I thought he should have went when he started crying about it. It's fine. Whatever. We won't. I won't stay on him too much. Uh. March 18th, uh, Mohamed Makayev's got a fight against Fialo. Uh, I say his first name wrong. J-A-F-E-L. I, I say it wrong. Uh, but I thought... Jafel Filo. I thought 
Muhammad was going to be out until like October for some reason. I'm really surprised he's already back. He just had surgery like four weeks ago, I thought, or some shit. Maybe, maybe I, maybe I'm wrong, but he just had fucking surgery. I know. Yeah, he- that dude wants that youngest champion record, bro. Yeah, he'll get the belt and then get beat up and because he fucked his body up, probably. I don't know. I mean, I, I like him. Uh, more power to him, but. Damn, Christian Leroy Duncan is fighting uh, Dusko Tordorovic. Todorovic. Todorovic, good man. And then uh, Jack Shore will fight Maquan Amirakani. Uh, Shore is making his featherweight debut. Um, and then. What's after that? Jocelyn Edwards versus Peldova. Lucy Peldova on April 15th. Um, that'll, I'll actually, that shouldn't be too bad of a fight to watch. Uh, April 22nd, Song Yadon versus Ricky Simone. Man, I like Ricky, so I got no problems with that. I like him. Um, damn, I skipped, I skipped to get to that one. Uh, Bobby Green and Jared Gordon are also on that card. Norma Dumont, Carol Rosa, uh, Francis Marshall, Gomez. Um, yeah, that'll be a good card. I don't. I don't think that's going on a pay per view, so that should be fine. Um, I don't know why that one got put out of order. April eighth, Calvin Gastelum will fight Chris Curtis. Chris Curtis is free money. Get the best odds you can right now. You know how I feel about that. Gastelum. Fight not happening is also easy money. <laughs> yeah, that's probably true too. Thanks for crushing my fucking dreams already, bro. Because that's probably true too. But you know how I feel about gasoline, bro. Chris Curtis is cashing. Uh, uh, Michelle Waterson Gomez is fighting Luna Pinero. Uh, Inako, fuck Baham Bahamandevez. I know one of you guys can say that. Right. Ignacio uh, Bahamandevez. Yep, 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 yep. yep. We'll fight Nicholas Mota. Uh, Raul Rosa will fight Christian Rodriguez. And Steve Garcia Jr. will fight Nerdem Becky on April 8th at 287. I know there's other fights, but those are the ones that were just confirmed this week. We're only on ones confirmed from this week. Uh, April 15th, TJ Brown, Bill Elgio. Man, I like TJ Brown, so I'm not mad at that. Justin Kobe versus. Uh, Asmat Marzakanov, Marzakanov, um, Dene versus Heinstead, Heestant, Brady, Brady Heestant. I know I don't say that one right because I don't know. I don't know where. I don't know the pronunciation. Brady Heistand? Yeah, uh, I think Cade knows that dude. He, he's talked about maybe trying to get him in here. He's a nice enough guy. I did a little dive on him, so. I'll root for him. Uh, Pedro Munoz versus Chris Gutierrez. Uh, Pierre Rodriguez versus Julian Jillian Robertson. Lando Venata versus uh, Daniel Zulhubert. 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 Yeah, yeah. Zulhubert. Uh, Denise Gomez is fighting... Bruna Brazel. Um, Martin Boudet is fighting Jake Collier. How the fuck does Jake Collier still keep getting fights, man? I swear to you, that dude is Dana White's nephew's or wife's nephew. That's what happened on New Year's Eve. That's what happened. She made him give him this fight. That's what happened. I'm fucking telling you. I've been telling you. (laughs) I've been telling you. He's got to be your fucking nephew or something, bro. It don't make no fucking sense. Fuck you. Bro, I, man, I don't know what Dana. And then Edson Barbos, Barbosa versus Billy Quarantino. I'm looking forward to this. I'm really looking forward to this. Yeah, so Edson has looked really good lately, but he's got to hit the down slope. I really hope this isn't it, but he's got to hit the down slope, man. Like, age catches everybody. Give me Billy Q. Yeah, like, yeah. I love Edson Barbosa, bro, but I am so worried about age. I, I'm just going to be honest. Like, Billy Q is Billy Q's taking some damage recently, though. 
That's what I was gonna say. Billy Q aside, bro, I'm I'm just worried about Edson. He's bro, how old is he? Thirty seven? I guess that's not quite I thought he was thirty nine. So that's not as bad as I thought. But he lost the decision. You know, Billy Q is about thirty four. He lost the decision to Mitchell. He lost uh the KO to Giga. Um and then he had like where he beat Shane Burgos and Americani before that, but bro, he lost five out of six right before that. Um, fuck, I love Edson Barbosa, but I think they're trying to boost um, Quarantillo because if you've noticed, like his last few matchups, he's getting guys that like can't hold up cardio wise because that's like clearly his advantage. I think his striking defense is like one of his biggest disadvantages. Obviously, because he gets hit a lot, but he just the way he fights, he's like a junkyard dog. So he just keeps outlasting these dudes. And this is this is the same thing, because I initially thought the same thing. I'm like, oh, dude, Barbosa is going to tear this guy up. But then, yeah, Gabe mentioned it, I think, too. Like, it's it it makes sense, man. He's just going to he's just going to draw him out until he gets tired and he's going to gas him out. Yeah, I see it too, man. And like, you know, I get a little bit attached to these guys before bet time, but when it comes time to cap it, it won't matter, man. But like Edson's been at it a long time and he had a bad stint and he should have retired after he had a couple good ones. I don't know. I feel I understand. It's not as simple as, you know, these guys retiring at forty years old, even if you've made, you know, two million bucks in your career you know it's it's just not real realistic so like i get why they keep fighting but like fuck it sucks sometimes to see some of these guys go downhill um april 29th the only card fight announced on the card nathan levy versus pete rodriguez uh bet the house on levy fuck yeah all day um dude west likes uh west doesn't like levy <laughs> i don't have you seen what what Dan and Madalena did to that other dude, bro? You kidding? <laughs> he says Pete's gonna knock him out, bro. Yeah. On, on what planet? <laughs> no, Liam. What do you got on that fight? I haven't looked into that matchup at all, but Pete Rodriguez can bang. Don't don't be mistaken, boys. If this fight is on the feet for any length of time, he can absolutely knock that guy's head off. And he throws naked uh, – Levy throws naked leg kicks. So, I mean, it sets up the right hand perfectly for Pete Rodriguez. So, yeah, I can see it. Levy should out-grapple him. I mean, he's a better grappler, but better grappler doesn't always win. I agree. Um, I'm going to jump over to a little Bellator. I won't clock all these ones off like I did the other ones, but um, Neiman Gracie got a new opponent. You know, Gracie's are always notable. Uh, he'll fight Dante Shiro, Shpir, uh, Shihiro. Um, Usman Nurmagomedov is fighting Benson Henderson, Bellator 292. Uh, I wonder who's going to win that. Oh, yeah, I wonder. Um, I have a theory about that whole crew and how they're going to retire with belts and shit. Uh, Grand Prix quarterfinals will be uh, Musayev versus uh, Sh- I can't say Alexander's last name. I think it's Shabli. Um, those are kind of notable. There's a bunch of fights announced. Uh, man, James Gallagher. That's the one I was looking for. He's fighting uh, uh, Lindro Hugo. Uh, Gallagher's pretty fun to watch. Uh, I know, Joe Higo? Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll tune in to watch Gallagher. That's the truth. He's just fun. Um, even when he loses, sometimes you root for him to lose. But I'll tune in to see it for that, truth be told. I'm surprised he's uh, he's on their prelims, though. Just for draw, I figured he would make Bellator's main card, if I'm being honest. Uh, they don't have a bunch of big, big draws. Um Kat Zingano is fighting Liam McCourt. I think that'll be a fun fight to watch. That's Bellator 293. Um, what else do we got? Oh, Bellator Paris. Douglas Lima versus uh, Costello Van Stinas at middleweight. Um, I like Douglas Lima, so I'll watch that one. I'll probably watch that fight just to catch the Douglas Lima fight. Uh, man. 
fucking PFL. You still with us, Andrew? Because I did a whole I, fucking PFL. I, I look at PFL every week now because of you, bro. If you flake out on me and you don't keep up with PFL this year, we're going to have fucking beef. I'm going to probably end up watching these cards because I do so much fucking whatever I do on this shit. Drives me crazy. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to be taping shit like three months in advance, but yeah, I mean, come, come, come like the, the fight cards. Yeah, we'll definitely be ready to go. So here's what I got. They announced two cards, week five, women's flyweight, uh, Chelsea Hackett versus Desiree Giannis. Um, Hackett is coming off a second round TKO loss to Victoria Leonardo um, on Dana White Contender Series in November 2020. Uh, Muay Thai specialist Caitlin Neal will face Belgian fighter. I can't say her first name. It's Greta uh, Eckhout. Um, Did you say Caitlin Neal? Is that the chick from The Ultimate Fighter? Uh, yeah, that's, yeah, Caitlin Neal's from The Ultimate Fighter. Look at the girl that lost to Julia in the finale. Man, isn't, I isn't that the that. chick that Usman really likes a lot? I feel like it was Caitlin Neal. She's like that tall, thin chick, right? Yeah, she was the runner-up on that season. She came in second. Yeah, okay. Uh, Invicta, Invicta veteran Helen Patel, pre Rotel. I can't say her last name. Fuck it, it is what it is. We'll fight. Uh, Team Olympia product, uh, Lisa Maldin, and then four time, um, four time UFC competitor. That's the nicest way to say it. Shane Young faces contender series alumni Sandra Lovato. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know many of them women. I only know the ones that have fucked around in the UFC. Um, I don't, I, 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 yeah. Usually I even know who Invicta fighters are. I don't know who Helen is, if I'm being honest, man. I don't know. Is she a, uh, is she black or a Cuban looking? It, Helen Peralta? Peralta, yeah. Oh, she was on Tough. That was a girl that was supposed to be like, uh, she, fought, she was the bare knuckle champion. Yeah. Oh, I think I do know who that is. Yeah, she was on this last season. Yeah, she just she just beat somebody that was an ex UFC fighter as well too. In in uh, in Evicta, she forgot who she fought, but uh, it's that Brazilian chick that was uh, man, what was her name? She just fought. She just fought Helen Peralta, but then Helen beat her. I thought I thought the Brazilian was gonna win. Hmm. Um, well, at least she's coming off a win. I mean, PFL is growing. Whether you know the names just offhand or not, these guys are definitely growing the roster, and they're definitely growing the caliber of fighters. Credit to them. I mean, I, I give it to it. Andrew loves these guys. Uh, PFL. She just beat Pollyanna Batello. Batello? Yeah, yeah she did. Pa- Pollyanna Batello. She's fought in the UFC. Yeah. So they also did their uh, – featherweight billing for week five for the men's f- or not featherweight billing flyweight billing let me see here i got this fucked up featherweight billing for the men's challenger series week six um david uh newcomer david evans and brian zurch zurcher that's his last name guys i'm sorry I, I I don't speak all these languages. I brush up on all the UFC fighters I can, and Andrew has me doing this shit. I struggle with the UFC fighters. Give me a break. Uh, SGB, SBG Ireland prospect uh, Nathan Kelly. He's two and six. Hey well, Joe, let me give you a little advice. If you yeah. just say it like you mean it, ain't nobody gonna question. Like, oh, he, he knows what the fuck he's talking about. No, I maybe I've been saying that name I, wrong this whole time. And then they're saying it wrong. You know, that shit with conviction. Yeah, Michael Jordan. You know, talking about like you know, Jordan. Michael Jordan was your example. <laughs> yeah, but we know Michael Jordan in MMA, bro. We got that wrong. Do you know Michael Jordan in MMA? All right, man. He'll fight uh, Erie's fight series vet uh, Zachary Hicks, uh, 2022 tournament participant. Uh, Ego Husick will fight undefeated. Gabriel Braga and ex-Indian bodybuilder Vicus 
Ruhil will fight uh, Africa's Extreme Fighting Championship and current title holder, uh, Kabesa. K-A-B-E-S-A. Kabesa. Yeah, that's the best I got. Um, Andrew, you know who any of those guys are? Lay it on us. I got nothing for you right now, man. Did you say Rug Rug? I know Rug Rug. I'm just saying, bro. Like, I, I just prop to them, but I, I have no idea who any of these guys are. Uh, I do know who Nathan Kelly is. That's not true. Uh, yeah, but you, you said this is their challenger series, right? So these people aren't supposed to be known. Okay, it's, good. It, it's like it's like the same way people watch like Dana White contender series. Like nobody knows who those people are oh, until so this, the ta- until the card gets released, and then they go look up tape. Oh, I understood then. See, I don't watch this shit. I'm yeah, gonna... so the Challenger series is basically like an intro to PFL as like a professional, so to say. And then once they build themselves up there, that's when they work themselves into the tournament or the regular season. You know what I mean? I got you. This is to see who makes the season. I get you. Some guys get slots, so this is like I get it. Okay, um, that's all I got on them. Uh, they grow up so fast, Andrew. One fight um, in the others is one championship stage. Norcut will fight uh, a Mad Maj Tabby. Um, in Isn't that the, the headliner? I don't know. Right now, I don't know for sure, but it's on the one's U.S. ground, like their first on, you know, uh, on land fight card. In U.S. The, soil? Yeah, on U.S. soil. There you go. Uh, and it's one fight night 10. So I know that that's why this dude's coming off of a four round, no. uh, four year layoff. I don't know if you guys. Hell of a lot of time off. This guy, he got his whole fucking face broke. Sage Court Norka got like his whole face broke. He got fucked up. I didn't think he'd ever fight again, if I'm being honest. So good on him. Please don't go out there and get Yo, murdered. man, he's set though, bro. He married an actress, bro. He secured the bag. He married a what? He married an actress, bro. He secured the bag. He's good to go. He ain't got to fight. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when the UFC tried to. Try to make him and Paige Van Zandt the next big thing. Yeah, hey, look how that turned out. Well, I mean, he had everything going for him. I mean, he had the highlight reel. He had the look. He had the build. I mean, the kid was a star. He just – his talent only brought him so far. I think he did himself a huge disservice by sticking around with uh, Team Alpha Mel, to be honest with you. Yeah, they all do. Team Alpha uh, – TJ Dillashaw was ahead of the curve. That's the truth. Um. You know, I think Dwayne Ludwig was the curve, to be honest with you. Probably. Um, I I think there was something to the idea that Dwayne and Cody were juicing, and or Dwayne and TJ were juicing, and it didn't go over well at Alpha Male. I I believe that that story will probably one day come out. It's uh, I I, I followed that pretty closely. It seems like there was a. Maybe a group of them that were okay with that lifestyle and a group of them that weren't, and the ones who were left. Just what it's like to me. Joe, you about ready to roll one? Uh, bro, I'm, th- I'm on my, like, third one. I, this is what I do to stay up on this fucking space. Uh, I'm, I'm behind, behind. MMA dirt sheets. I only got a couple of couple of four little thing uh three things on here. Robert Whitaker is indicating that the Alex the AP fight uh, or AP may not rematch Izzy right away and he may get to fight him in April or May. Uh that would be exciting. Um I talked about Bisbing's back earlier. Um Carlos Wait, hold on. Oh, I, I can't say his name. He's the reporter. Amanda Nunes and Irene Aldana for March 4th is not set in the works at the moment. Um, saying Aldana is one of the front runners uh, to face Nunes is fair, but she says she has not got an official offer. Uh, that fight has been rumored. No official offer, according to Aldana. Uh, Gilbert Burns is calling for Colby or Bilal or... Colby on tough. Um, man, 
maybe I'm wrong. Does does Kobe sell tough? Do people tune in to see Kobe, or do they get sick and tired of his gimmick? No, I'm tough. Hell yeah. I the question know. is, can he keep that gimmick up the entire time, or does he show his real true personality? Yeah, I mean, you but feel the thing like is, he's still got the legal trouble. Well, Gilbert Burns says he recently ran into Kobe, and Kobe called him over like, Gilbert, Gilbert, I'm a huge fan. I love what you do, and was really nice to him and his family and said, man, it's a shtick. I'm just trying to sell fights, whatever, whatever, whatever. And he said they had a good old time. Um, So, like, I don't know. If Kobe kept the shtick up the whole time, I feel like, I don't know. I feel like it would actually hurt him. Um, maybe if he shows us who all these other, who all these fighters say he is a little bit. Yeah, maybe, maybe he, he, start he, goes from a hill to a, he goes from a hill to a face. Maybe it's time to pull, to pull the old WWE trick again. Or he could take the Chow Sonnen route and just focus completely on coaching. Yeah, I don't know. I think then you would have to see it come out, though, right? Like, so if he does do that when they're recording, you know, they're going to have to make content, and that content would have to be him spending time with them guys. Um, That's a question I've always wanted to ask those fighters. I've never talked to anybody off of the show. Um, I guess I have, and I should do that at Fight Week next year. I wonder how much time they spend with the coaches, like, throughout the time that they're there, like, how much actual training time do they get with Bilal Mohammed and Gilbert Burns, for example? Like, how much of it is just camera work and how much of it is actual time? I've always wondered. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Um, Bilal says that Gilbert Burns just beat up number 15, Neil Magny, who would probably get beat by Jake Paul. I only bring that up because there is a good chance that Jake Paul would beat Neil Magny. Sorry. Uh, There just probably is. Yep, I'm a shitty person for that. Um, All right. I got Scratch It or Bet It, and then me and Oozman, or me and Dead Picks uh, are going to run off probably 10 minutes of PSL before we call it quits. Oh, my bad about that. I didn't get to (laughs) watch it. You didn't fucking watch it? It was not TBS. I thought it was going to be on the app. It was, it was only episode one. I'm like, it's oh, on YouTube for free, bro. YouTube? No, it's for not. For free. Get the fuck out of here. It's on YouTube for free with no ads, bro. Nah, I was on, the, what do you call it, Dana White or some posted something that's on TBS, and I was running, trying to look around for it. I didn't find it on YouTube. It's on um, Power Slap's channel. All right, well. <laughs> I'll be prepared. I'll be prepared for what do you call it? Week three. No, you heard it here. What do you call it? Hold me to it. Week three. Here It'll be canceled by then. Sure. Yeah, the fucking old show's going to be over before then, bro. All right. So uh, we do scratch it or bet it. Uh, that's kind of what we close with when I don't have a closing topic. Uh, 